Okay. So, start of chapter two. Chapter one is is all review. And for those of you in honors pre-calculus, most of chapter two is going to be review as well, but I'm going to teach it as though you haven't seen it, because if you weren't in honors pre-calculus, you haven't talked about limits. Read through this definition of limit and see if you can make sense out of that. <coughs> And if you can, explain it to me. Just, to, there's so much just notational. You, you, you have to see examples after you see something like this to make any sense with it. I mean, I, I think this is, I think this is epsilon. I don't even know what this variable is. I want to call it squid. It kind of looks like a squid here. Um, but when we take the absolute value of two, two numbers, and think, it's an x value. It's on the x-axis. It's x minus another value. What are we really finding? Like if x is 7 and y is 5, we're finding that they're two apart, right? We're finding the distance between them. So this is distance, whether we're positive or negative. Like x could be 9 and c is 7. Or x could be 7 and c is 9. They're two apart. That, the absolute value is wiping out that positive negative. So we're basically saying as we can allow x to get really close to c, but x can never be c. You with me there? We're going to forget about squid for a minute here. And the height of the function at x is getting close to some value L, which is called our limit. So the limit's dealing with the height. The limit is how high the graph gets. If that's less than epsilon, you no, know, they're getting closer and closer and closer, right? Because they tell us this epsilon is a positive number. They're getting closer and closer and closer together. Um, then they say that thing is the limit. Here, here's what it means, and I'm just going to do it like in in my ET language. ET had the ET phone home and it had the big long finger with the light at the end and basically you're just seeing this big long finger kind of pointing to where we're going. So let's talk about, let's say we have a curve, we have a hole in a curve right here and we're coming into that curve like this. So I would say ET is pointing right at that point and then the other ET character, we got two of them, two extraterrestrials, fingers coming right to that point. I hope it's clear. If I said, what is the value of f of negative 1, hopefully you would say it does not exist. I made it pretty clear there's a circle there. However, left-hand ET and right-hand ET are in agreement. As I get closer and closer and closer to that value, it appears as though we are going to touch up at 2. So we would say... The limit, if I call this f, as x approaches negative 1 is 2. And that's an important distinction to make. F of, f of negative 1 doesn't even exist. But the limit does because we have ET, left hand, right hand agreement. We're coming in for this touch at that same point. They just have to say, if I could get there, we would touch. Is that all right? Whereas, let's put another function on here. My blue function, I'll call that guy g. And of course, we're interested at 1. Does g of 1 exist? Nick, what is g of 1? I'm sorry, Mr. Schultz. What what does g of what is g of negative one? Got the name wrong. Uh, negative three. Negative three. Very good. It does exist there. Does our limit exist at one? Et. Et left hand. Et right hand. They gonna meet at that point when they get to one? No. One of them's up here. One's down there. So the limit doesn't exist at one, but f of one exists. These are points that become pretty significant in the study of calculus, those kind of things. Now, lots of times we just say, well, does the limit of f exist at 0? Yeah, it does. It's up here at 2.3 or whatever. If the graph is continuous, no big deal. But when we have holes or when we have jumps, that's when the interesting stuff happens, and that's what...
tons of the first semester study of calculus is about. And you guys, when you did rational functions last year, you dealt with holes in the graph. And whether it was honors pre-calculus or pre-calculus, holes become a pretty big study of, of calculus. You know, how do we handle those things? All right, so we'll, we'll definitely see more of those. This is the notation we're going to use. This will be read, the limit as x approaches c of f of x, or the limit of f of x as x approaches c would be even better, is L in this case. Could be 2. All right. Now these ones. Oh, man, I'm going to have to know all these. If you didn't even know limits, if you didn't do anything with limits last year, you were in regular pre-calculus, I think if I told you, let's say we have a function f of x, and I said the limit as x approaches, let's say 1, that it's 7. And the limit of g is g approaches 1 is 2. Are you with me? Then I say, what do you suppose the limit as we approach 1 is of f of x plus g of x? So, geez, I don't know. I haven't seen the rule. I hope it's 7 plus 2. It is. Well, what about when we subtract them? I hope, geez, I hope it's 7 minus 2. It is. When we multiply them, I hope it's 7 times 2. It is. I hope it's 7 divided by 2. It's not. No, I'm just kidding. It is. <laughs> 7 minus 2. Okay? And then in 6, if we have it raised to some power, whether it's a fraction or just a power or whatever... I hope it's I hope it's just two raised to whatever R on S is. It is the limit of you know what I'm saying. I hope it's just seven my limit times or raised to the whatever R on S is. It is okay. So this is a I knew it before I knew it because I hope that's what they would be. Hope there's not much anything more to it than that. So it's sort of like you can distribute the limit even on multiplication. Now oh here's the constant. 7 times the limit. Well, hey, that's a post function. 7 times is tall. Oh, yeah, we just multiply by the constant. Okay? All righty. Now, in finding limits, in finding limits, the first thing we want to do, and now really the notation of this, this should be right up underneath it. X, is, X approaches 2. We should have used a, a better a better uh, program to write that. So it should just be right underneath there. People will forget this. And there are going to be some problems. The easiest way to find a limit is direct substitution. The limit of this thing as x approaches 2 is, well, let's just put 2 in. It equals 2 times 2, 4. Isn't life easy? That's it. It says use a graphing calculator to support this. Y equals 2X goes through the point 2, 4. ET agrees right and left. Would have wasted my time graphing that. Is that okay? We're in agreement. We're coming together. We're going to meet at 4. When, we both, when I come to the left to 2 and you go to the right to 2, we're going to meet up at 4. That's our limit. Okay. Uh, try B, direct substitution. We could go to calculator, and I'm there. There might be. I suspect there are probably some uh, some vertical asymptotes here. There might be a hole in this graph somewhere. If there is a hole in this graph, it's at negative three because it's holes occur when we have zero on zero that we're going to talk about soon. But the graph exists at negative one, and these graphs, these rational functions, they they don't just stop. They might approach vertical asymptotes. Or, or, or horizontal, or excuse me, they might approach um, slant asymptotes, but they definitely continue. They don't just come slamming to a stop at negative 1. So we have right-hand, left-hand agreement on negative 2. You could graph it, look at the graph, and you would see that. We're not going to do that because we're going to start looking at the graphs real shortly here. 
Okay, example two. Explain why substitution does not work to find the limit of this. Well, if I put in negative two, I get the square root of negative two minus two, I get the square root of negative four. Pretty clear why it's not gonna work. We're undefined there. The graph of this thing looks like that. Square root function to the right two. It doesn't exist over here at negative two. How about here? Zero, zero. Put in zero, absolute value zero is zero on zero, zero. If you were with me last year, I, I described this as crossing the beams. What movie reference? Ghostbusters. In Ghostbusters, they had these nuclear accelerators on their back, and that's how they contained the ghosts and drew them into their little containment devices. I should remember what that's called. And But if they, they were told to never cross the beams of one another because the world would stop to exist as we know it. And zero on zero is like crossing the beams in algebra. Once that happens, the world stops existing until, they, until you start calculus and the world exists again. So anyway, undefined. That's why we can't find it that way. Maybe there's another way. There might be other ways, but algebraically, we can't deal with zero on zero. Watch this. We know that seven on zero is undefined, right? We know that zero on six, no problem. That's zero. But what about zero on zero? Zero on zero, you might not know it, is 21. Cross multiply, isn't it? Does that work out? And it's pi, and it's negative square root of three, and it, zero on zero could be anything, but it's undefined at the same time. See, if I cross multiply, I get zero on zero. So of course, it's not really 21. Okay. All right. So let's let's talk about zero on zero when we cross the beams. We're still going to try direct substitution. I put in one. And I get 1 minus 1 on 1 squared minus 1. I get 0 on 0. Welcome to calculus. But here's the good news. A rational function that's a polynomial on a polynomial, if 1 produced a 0 and 1 produced a 0 here, if 1 produces a 0 in a rational function, or excuse me, in a polynomic function, that means that x minus 1 is a factor. So I'm going to go limit x minus 1 over x minus 1 must be a factor of this. Oh, of course it is. x minus 1, x plus 1. Last year, I regret it now. Um, I got lazy with the limits, and I allowed people to get lazy by not rewriting limit. You write limit until you direct substitute. Okay? We continue writing that down. But now... I can cancel. If you cancel, or when you cancel, just a little line through it. Don't scribble it out. I need to see it. Whoever's grading AP exam needs to see it. We need to see the work along the way. So now I've got the limit as x approaches 1 of 1 on x plus 1. So my x minus 1s were the troublemakers. Because if x, x minus 1, I put 1 in, I get 0, I get 0. But once it's gone, now I'm going to try 1 on 1 plus 1, 1 half. Okay. I would like you to graph this in your calculator on Zoom Standard. Make sure to wrap the numerator and denominator in parentheses. And then we're going to go Zoom Standard with that. probably a lot more of the graph than we need. What are we really interested in? We're really interested in what's happening around 1. So if I was just using my calculator to do direct substitution, because maybe the function will be a lot worse than this guy. Maybe it's something really ugly, so I'm just going to graph it right off the bat. 
Um, I'm going to go. I'm going to graph it. I'm going to go straight to second calc. That's above trace value. And I'm going to put one in here. That is the gra that's the graphing calculator equivalent of direct substitution. Hit enter, and it says y equals. I don't know what y equals. Now I could trace at this point. If I hit trace and I go just a that took me just a little bit to the to the left. I'm at 0 0.984 and 0 0.503. If I keep going to the left, I get further away from 0.5. I keep coming in. I'm closer to 0 0.5. At 0.98, I'm 0 0.5. At 1.1, I'm 0.46. Well, there's sort of there's sort of some evidence to say that I'm that they're close, you know. But maybe it jumps from 0.47 to 0.512 or something like that. Your calculator, the graphing portion, is not the best place to determine that there's a hole here. Maybe this is a hole that jumps. Okay, we don't know if we have that ET agreement coming into the exact same spot. All right, so what we would rather do is go into our table. Let's go second table set, that second window. My table start, I want my table start to be one. And I want to be taking tiny, tiny steps, maybe point zero 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 one. That can be arbitrary, but you don't want to step by ones or by point ones. We wants to be really tiny steps. And then I'm going to go into table, second table. And as I cruise down this table, you see I'm not really at 1. It's just rounded to 1. And I'm not really at 0.5 all the time. It's just rounding to that. But right here I've got an error. And I'm going to go above. Oop, i got to go above by being over here in the x's. I go above those. And I see point up. Oh, it's a little bit above 0.5. When I get to the other side of one, it's a little bit below 0.5. Does that mean that 0.5 is my limit? It might still jump. Maybe it jumps 0 0.00000000001. But it's starting to support it. My point being, you cannot find a limit. You, you can't assume it's just a hole in the graph. No matter how far you zoom in, you can become pretty convinced of it. It's good to check but you have to show it some other way. Is that all right? Everybody comfortable using that? So I think table, you know how I feel. Usually I say like 80% of the answers are in the graph. Table, really, really good for, for confirming um, limits. Okay, so if we go to B, let's see what happens here. I put one in, I'm just gonna do it in my head. One minus three, negative two plus two, zero. That's okay so far, because if I get zero over five, that's a vertical asymptote, and then I'd say, okay, it's trying to be infinity or negative infinity. It doesn't exist. But one-on-one, -on -one, problem. But here's the good news. If this is a polynomial and this is a polynomial, they've given me a factor. Now, these are easy to factor, but what if it was fifth degree? Then they've given me a factor, and I can long divide and find what I'm, what I'm left with. So I know t minus 1 is a factor. First times first equals first. This is t. Negative 1 times something equals positive 2. That's minus 2. Can that possibly work for the oi of foiling? t squared minus 2t minus a t minus 3t's. This must have a t minus 1. It does. t minus 1, t plus 1. How do we cancel? One little line through it. Limit as t approaches 1. I've eliminated my troublemakers. Now I direct substitute, and I get 1 minus 2 on 1 plus 1, or negative 1 half. Is that OK? Try C. I'll give you a quick head start on C.
We good? We find out 2 gives us 0 and 0, so we know, even though it's easy factoring, we know x minus 2 is a factor of both. Once those are gone, we can try direct substitution, 2 on 2 squared, 1 half. So what we've learned is that all limits are always either 1 half or negative 1 half. <laughs> don't, don't, don't take my word for that. All right. Um, how about this guy? Man, i got a mess here. I'm really hoping direct substitution works. Put in 0, I get 1 half minus 1 half, 0 on 0, rats. I got a mess here. I don't like dealing with a mess. When I got a mess, I clean the mess. And on our chapter one test, that was a huge highlight, the one time that we had to clean the mess. I think I only had two people get common denominator, smash together, get common denominator, smash together, flip, multiply. One of them missed the problem. Didn't feel bad. Out of this term, this term, this term, the least common denominator needs a factor of 2 and needs a factor of 2 plus x. That's my least common denominator. I'm going to multiply by that and clean up my mess. When I take this whole package to here, the x plus 2's cancel, and I get 1 times 2. When I take the whole package to here, to this minus 1, the 2's cancel, and I get minus 1 times 2 plus x. In the denominator, nothing cancels. 2x. 2 plus x, you don't get to be lazy, you have to put limit as x approaches 0 until you substitute. So can you tell me why I'm not tempted to distribute this 2x in and make this 4x plus 2x squared? Why wouldn't I want to do that? I want to put 0 in this, and I don't want to get 0 in the denominator. 2 is not a troublemaker. 2 plus x isn't a troublemaker. x is a troublemaker. If that value becomes 0, I got problems. I want to cancel this x somewhere down the road. So if I distribute it through, I'm just going to have to factor it back out. Does that make sense? So I'm hoping the top I can get a factor of x. So limit as x approaches 0. This is 2 minus 2, and this is negative 1 times positive x. Calculus students do not make that mistake that we don't distribute negatives. And I say that wishfully because I just graded your tests and we did make that mistake. Find me a mistake I haven't seen a thousand times. I'm bored to tears of not distributing negatives. Boring to me. Okay. All right, so I get negative x. That's still on. Two, I preserve this x for canceling purposes. So this is the limit as x approaches 0, cancel, cancel, that's negative 1 on 2 times 2 plus x. So my troublemaker is gone. Direct substitution, negative 1 on 2 times 2 plus 0, negative 1 fourth. Now I guess I was wrong. Good there? Okay. Let's go ahead and get x times sine of 1x in our calculators to zoom standard. Let's graph this guy. Let's go. Make sure you're in radians as well. This is kind of a cool function. a whole lot of boring. Again, if yours doesn't look like this, first place you should look, make sure you're in radians. A whole lot of boring until I get close in around zero. Um, kind of weird when we think about it, because as x is getting bigger and bigger, do you think this is going to hang at one? I mean, when x becomes a million, now I'm multiplying by a million. And the value of signs always goes between negative one to one, so isn't it going to go up to like a million? Well, what happens when x is a million here? We're basically taking the sign of 1 on a million 
basically taking the sine of zero, right? And the sine of zero is zero. So I got a big number million fighting against a number really close to zero, and there lo looks like there's some kind of balance going on there. But we're really only interested in what's going on on this problem around zero anyway. So let's go ahead and let's check that out. I'm going to go straight to second calc, second calc value, and I'm going to put my zero in. And of course it yells at me. I can't have zero in the denominator. So I could bump to the left, bump to the right. I'm going to zoom, because it, it's so tiny here. I'm going to zoom box this. And I'm going to build a little box right around zero, zero. Ours will be different sizes. But just a real tiny box and make sure I'm, I've got zero, zero included. And think about our little crooked fingered ETs here. As they're getting closer to zero, does it look like maybe they're coming to the same place? It looks like it looks like they're trying to gather there, but still there's weird stuff going on. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom box that again. Really tiny, right around zero, zero. Just barely to the left and just barely above. Like my values are like 0 0.006 and negative 0 0.006 and 0 0.009. Just barely, then barely below, barely to the right stamp enter. Ours will be offset differently. Calculator working pretty hard here. Why is this happening? Why is this just going crazy all of a sudden? Well, what happens is x gets close to, z to zero. This is approaching infinity. So now I'm going, I'm going from sine, when when x is when x is one tenth, I'm going from sine of ten to when when x is point zero 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 one, I'm going to a million. So in that tiny little distance of less than a tenth, we're going through virtually a million different a million periods. This isn't true of the graph. I mean, this thing would be completely colored in if our calculator wasn't skipping values. But it does seem to be squeezed down into zero, and it's actually from a theorem called squeeze theorem or sandwich theorem. The, the value is getting squeezed. There's no way through it other than this, and that's part of tomorrow's discussion. What they're hoping we're going to do today, though, is just come up with some values like this of, of this, you know, when x is negative 0.1. I'm going to go back to zoom standard. Now, what do you think? Better to get the values from here or from table on our calculator? You might think table. However, notice I'm not counting by the same increment. If this was negative 0.1, negative 0.2, negative 0.3, negative 0.4, negative 0.5, table is our friend. But these are different increments. So I'm going to just go right here when I graph this guy. Why is it not graphing? Anybody else have that graph on? Turn off, turn on. Thank you. Okay. So I'm going to go into table set. Oh, no, I, I don't want to do it on table. I'm sorry. I'm going to go into second calc. Threw me off. Value. And now I'm just going to put in my values. This is nice because negative 0.1, I put it in, and I'm going to put down five decimal places. It's negative 0.054402. Is that five? That's six. That's okay. I'm, I'm going to put in six. Now, I don't have to hit second calc value again. It's in that mode. I can just put in negative 0 0.01. And I get negative 0 0.005064. And I can just put in negative 0 0.001. And now I get times 10 to the negative fourth. That moves the decimal four places. Negative, or it's actually positive now. It's positive 0 0.000, fourth place, 827. And one more, negative 0 0.0001. Looks like it's negative point. This is to the fifth, negative fifth, right? Four decimal places. I've moved it one already. Two, three, four, five, three, one. Okay. Is it pretty clear what the what this question, the purpose of this question is trying to get across? 
Because after we do the 0.1 to 0.001s, I suspect our 0.0001 positive here is going to get closer to zero as well. And we're just seeing those fingers come in. They look like they're going to come in and touch. And zero seems like a reasonable spot for them to touch. Is that all right? Okay. I'll leave the, the rest of that uh, table for you. Okay. Which of the following statements are true of the function y equals f of x graphed here? So this is notation. You might have to look at your worksheet to see this. This is x approaches negative 1, and then there's a plus after it. That means from the right. That's one-handed ET. So as I approach negative 1, here's negative 1 on the x-axis, from the right, as I approach that from the right, I'm going left, but I'm from the positive side. I'm coming in here toward it. What am I pointing at? What height? One. Pointing at 1. Now, is the limit at negative 1, 1? No, because we don't have agreement from left and right. We don't have a, this, this going on. But the limit from the right is 1. Hey, if I keep going, I'm going to get up to 1 if I get all the way there. Is that okay? So this one is true. So this is the limit at 0 as we approach from the left. So as I approach from the left, this is the one that will throw people at times. You've got to pay close attention here. And ET's reaching out, reaching out, reaching out, reaching out to right here. I'm approaching zero. ET is approaching, ET's finger is approaching zero. I get it. F of zero is one. But as we're approaching zero on the X, we're getting closer and closer and closer to zero on the Y. This is true. I want to give you just a quick head start. Try the rest of these. Let's see how we do. Probably a minute and a half. I don't expect you to be done with this, but this is a video, so we're gonna, it's enough dead time. Um, approaching zero from the left, am I approaching one as I'm moving in closer to zero from the left? No, I'm approaching zero. Now, I get it. F of negative one is one, but not the limit. Okay, so now this asks, is the limit at zero as I approach from the left equal to the limit at zero as I approach from the right? Yeah. They're reaching out and trying to touch at height of zero, aren't they? So this is true. Then does the limit as we approach zero exist? Yeah, the limit exists, and the limit is zero. F, does the limit as we approach zero, is it uh, just period, approach it from both sides, is it zero? Yes, it is. Is the limit one? No, it's not. And that is a big emphasis of what they're trying to say here. The limit does not have to, I mean, the function can exist and not be the limit at that instant. That happens when we have jumps like that. How many of you got through G and had each of those correct? Geniuses. All right. Limit as we approach 1. Is it 1? Well, the limit as we approach 1 from the left is 1. The limit as we approach left, 
uh, one from the left is one, but as we approach from the right, it's zero. So the limit doesn't even exist. The right hand and left hand limits exist, but the ETs aren't touching. So false. Is the limit zero? No, it's zero from the right, but one from the left. False. This one, I think J is more interesting if I make that instead of two zero. Is the limit as we approach two from the left equal to zero? Because there is no way the limit as we approach from there is up here. But is it zero? Is the limit as we approach two from the left, is it zero? Yeah, it's just from the left. True. Is the limit zero at two, though? No, because we don't even approach it from the right. You with me? It's all about we have to have left and right hand uh, agreement. All right, one piecewise function to discuss here. This isn't going to this isn't going to take long. Um, these are just lines. Here's a line with y-intercept three, and I'm only looking at this line to the left of two. It has slope negative one, so it's going to come down here. But when I get to two, it's not equal to so down hunting with a circle. And this graph looks like this portion of the graph looks like that. And then our right side of the graph has a y-intercept of 1 and only increases at a rate of 1 on 2 and doesn't exist until we get to 2 and, in fact, doesn't even exist at 2, does it? It's right here. And then it goes up 1 over 2, two up 1 over 2. So graphing these things is a breeze when they're lines. And you almost know for sure what the questions are going to be about. The questions are going to be about what are our limits at um, at two. So here's one: the limit as we approach from the right. That's my blue graph. So I'm going to go limit as x approaches two from the positive side from the right of f of x is. I don't care. I'm not looking for another et. I'm all on my own. I just want to know how high up am I going to be when I get to two. I'm to 2. How high up am I? 2. If I get there, it'll be 2, right? The limit as x approaches, not negative 2, but 2 from the left. Careful there. Of f of x is, I'm just driving along here. As I get close to 2, I'm at a height of 1. Does the limit as x approaches 2, f of x, exist? No, we're not in agreement. Nope. We don't touch at the same height. If so, what is it? If not, why not? We don't have left and right hand agreement. We'll eventually just refer to this as a jump, which kind of makes sense, doesn't it? We, we jump at that point. Okay, so I'm going to wrap it up there, and we will just finish up um, this one problem tomorrow and move into the second half of, uh, of B. Assignment, you should be pretty well equipped to, to get a good jump start on that. Okay, um, on your test, problem, everybody in here took, took both sections. Yes, that's awesome. Problem number 25 on, uh, which is on day two. You're going to potentially get some, some back on that um, for two reasons. I already, I already gave points back once, and then I had a student talking to me this morning about it. I'm like, oh, my gosh, that makes sense why you interpreted it that way. Determine when the following function equals 0. I'm looking for 2 here. That's when it equals 0. You've got to go through some work to come up with that. If you got it off your calculator, I'm not interested. And then it says or is undefined. So does that mean or? I'm either going to find out when it's 0 or I'm going to state when, when it's undefined. Or does it mean I'm going to do both? Now, on the... On, on the video on this problem, because I had so many people put where it is defined, I said, I wonder if I put where it is defined instead of is undefined on the video. And I did. I put where it's defined. Well, I initially canceled that. I called that like a half point off or a point off. I don't remember which it was. And I'm like, well, I can't do that because I, I, I just got done saying on the video. Um, so 
where is where is it undefined? And then we ended up saying something like x is x is greater than negative one, and that's where it was defined. So if you have a two here for your answer, you're going to get credit, full credit on that problem. And some of you got it right with it as it stated. So the grades may change a tiny bit, but only by going up. When you look at these two two parts, all that I ask is your two go together. They don't have to go alphabetical back here. They have to go together. Here. Alyssa. Taylor Bolt. Jenny. Max. Warren. Matt. Erica. Chris J. Carter. Matt. Raymond Dawn. Carissa. Kathleen. Adam. Jesse. Tyler. Tim. Nick. Sierra. Jocelyn. Elizabeth. Miss anybody? Yay. So yeah, those, you can look at those the rest of the remainder of the period. I just want them in here, those two together. Don't mix them up with other people. So I'm going to staple them back together. Probably help me if you would put your part one on top of your part two. 